Mixing with pink noise seems to have become a real trend in the last six months to a year, and I'm asked about it almost every day in the comments on my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to be doing three things. I'm going to be explaining what mixing with pink noise is and how it might be able to help you. I'm going to be demonstrating the technique on two mixes, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing my opinions and thoughts about the technique, both good and bad. So this technique is designed to help you balance your mix. So it's the very first step in your mix before you've done any EQ, compression, reverb, delay. This is supposed to help you set the levels of all of your faders or all of your tracks so that it's nice and balanced. And the reason that pink noise is used is because pink noise has an equal amount of energy in each octave. And for anyone wondering, pink noise sounds like this. So if you can play a pink noise and match your tracks to it, the idea is that when you mute the pink noise, everything is nice and balanced in a good place to start out. And the reason some people like to do this is because for some people it can be really difficult setting a balance of everything if there's 50, 60, maybe even 100 tracks. And for some people that takes them a lot of time and they don't like listening to all of the tracks whilst they're doing this because the more time you spend listening to the track, the more you get used to it and the less fresh your ears are on the track. That's how it works in theory. So in practice, what people do is one of two things. They either get a tone generator and send it to the master, which generates a pink noise tone. and you can just choose a dB value that suits you, maybe minus 10, minus 15 dB to give yourself a lot of headroom. Or you can simply download a pink noise uh, as a WAV file, drag it into your DAW, loop it, and use that instead of a pink noise generator. When you press play, the pink noise will be emitting sound out of your speakers. You take all of your faders down, and one by one you raise the fader until you can hear it, and then you lower it until it's just disappeared under the pink noise. Then you mute that fader and you move on to the next one. Some people say you mute and move on to the next. Some people say you don't have to mute. And many people prefer to do this with their mix summed into mono. So you can do that on the master or you can use any tool that can sum your mix to mono. All the other videos and articles online that I've read suggest that you ignore all reverbs and delays if you've been sent those as stems, just turn them off and set those later by ear because they're likely to be very wrong. I'm going to demonstrate both techniques. I'm going to be doing one in FL Studio 20 where I have the pink noise wave file and then I'm going to be doing a different mix in Studio 1, completely different style of song and I'm going to be using a tone generator and let's just look at the results. So in both DAWs, I found that this technique took me quite a while. It took me between five and 10 minutes to actually implement this technique in the DAW, and that doesn't include the setup time for getting the, getting the wave file or setting up the tone generator, but just running through each fader, muting, soloing, raising it up, getting the right level, and then pulling it down took me quite a while, to be honest. And also all the time, I was just being bombarded by this pink noise. And although I didn't have it very loud, it felt absolutely horrible just listening to this bland, 
uncreative tone for about 10 minutes at a time. In both cases, I'm not at all happy with this as sounding balanced and even across the frequency spectrum. The interesting thing is that the stems I already had were already EQ'd and balanced and ready to go, so I was expecting this to work very well, but I wasn't at all impressed with the techniques I got on either song. I just found that everything felt off, the vocals especially felt really bad, and also the drums just felt completely out of place with the song. And spending all of that time sort of painstakingly listening to this tone, trying to hear my track through it, and then just ducking it down again, repeating this over every single track took ages, and I really was expecting the result to be a lot better, and I feel that I could have got a better static mix in you know, two or three minutes without listening to the pink noise tone. I've also heard a lot of other people on YouTube and otherwise saying that this technique, you know, can help you set levels in one or two minutes and it's very quick and easy. But when I have a track count that exceeds 50 or 60 tracks, this thing's taking me five, 10, 15 minutes to do. It's not the quick one minute fix that everyone says it is. And in all the videos I've watched, it's taken everyone else a lot longer than a minute or two to do this as well. And the thing that was confusing me about this technique was some people were saying, you use it to keep your ears fresh on the mix. But I actually found that my ears weren't any more fresh at all because I just had to listen to this pink noise tone and the elements of my mix. And to be incredibly honest, it felt like one of the least creative things I've ever done in this studio. And it was incredibly demotivating to just sit here and do it in such a sort of clinical by the numbers way. So I was wondering who this technique was for because I was trying to find professionals that talk about regularly implementing this technique. And I was trying to find people with incredibly good mixes who implement this technique. But it seems to be that no matter how far people eventually take their song, this technique really only takes you a tiny portion of the way to that finished mix. And if you need to use pink noise to get to this just barely acceptable level, it's likely that if your song's going to end up sounding good, you could have got to that level without pink noise in just a few moments, just by listening to everything together and setting levels manually. There's also a few fundamental flaws with this technique that a lot of people don't talk about, and that is that it requires that all of your elements are either recorded well or produced very well. If, for instance, I have a bass drum with a big spike at 2K, if I'm raising that up just above the pink noise and I can hear that top end of the kick, and then I push it just underneath the pink noise, my level has not been set correctly because the base of that kick might be well under that pink noise reference but the top is over the pink noise reference so if the tracks themselves are not balanced well and recorded well this technique is probably going to set you backwards from where you really want to go with it but it also misses out a bigger picture which is learning the skills of quickly balancing and dialing in tones and levels is so much more important than, than people seem to be giving it credit for. When you're working either on mixes or in recording sessions, the ability as an engineer or producer to quickly set appropriate levels, dial in tones, route things correctly, doing all these things in real time is very important. I was doing a session with Calvin Pryor just the other day, I'll, I'll link the video here, where we were testing lots of microphones and guitar recordings and also some bass recordings. If I had had to tell him in the middle of the session that I needed to use pink noise to try and match his bass into the track, it would have made me look incredibly unprofessional. And as well as looking unprofessional, it probably would have totally killed the vibe. So learning over, over a long period of time, many months, many years, to set levels appropriately is definitely the way to go because it means that when you're in these live situations or the pressure is on and there's people in the room, you can just do it effortlessly. If you have to turn on a pink noise reference and there's anyone watching you doing it, it's gonna kill the vibe in the room and it's probably gonna make you look quite unprofessional. But as with most videos on YouTube, most of that is just my opinion. So by all means, I would completely recommend trying this technique out. And me trying this technique out has also opened my eyes to a few other things. And it's made me really think about balancing and levels in a different way. So I would recommend trying it out and maybe it does work for you. And if someone's getting on really, really well with pink noise or you have a specific way to use it in your mix, then please just leave a comment down below because I'd love to figure out a way to make it work. But for now, I would rather just rely on my ears. In time, doing many mixes and many songs, you will develop a good balance. As long as you're listening to really good music that you like listening to, that you think is balanced well in your mix room, over time, you're gonna start getting there. Just be critical of your mixes, keep trusting your ears, and you'll be fine. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.